Right, so I'm back in the garden again amongst the primroses and amongst the oil beetles and the bees and the bee flies. But I just want to talk about a really interesting strategy that these flowers have to avoid self-pollination. So they all look the same, but actually there are two types of flower amongst these primroses. So we've got something called the pin-eyed flower, which is where the stigma is right at the top here. And the anthers that hold the pollen are actually halfway down this tube that the petals form. And the other type of flower is the thrum-eyed flower. And this one is where we've got the anthers with the pollen right at the top and the stigma is halfway down this tube that these petals form. So those are the two types of flower. So if an insect comes along, like a brimstone for example, brimstone butterfly, it will put its proboscis, its tongue, down into the tube of the flower. If we've got a pin-eyed flower, the anthers, if you remember, with the pollen are halfway down this tube. So that pollen will stick onto its tongue halfway along. So then at some point it will go to another flower, a different type, and it will come across the thrum-eyed flower. And if you remember the stigma in these types of flower is halfway down that tube. And therefore the pollen halfway along its tongue will be perfectly placed to land on the stigma and pollinate that flower. So it's a perfect strategy for avoiding self-pollination and spreading the flower's genes amongst other plants.